Hi everyone, thank you. My name is Jeremy Olson with Benepets. Thank you for watching another edition of our YouTube video series. And today we have Dr. Cheryl Burton with us. Thank you, Cheryl, for being here so you much. Bet. Awesome. Really quick, I just, before we get into our, our discussion, I wanted to read kind of your resume, just kind of go over some of the highlights with you and introduce you to everyone. And first off, you received your PhD from Oregon State University in Microbiology, Biochemistry, and Oceanography. Mm -hmm. You were the assistant professor at the Institute of Marine Science at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, where you where you help direct a lot of the research programs. That there. was a fun job. Didn't yeah, I? <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, you, you so you did a lot of that with the environmental concerns and research there, and then you had a 24-year tenure as an associate professor and professor of microbiology at Brigham Young University, and then you're a member of the American Society of Microbiology, uh, Sigma Xi, and also the American Men of Science. And then you've published numerous science publications. Uh, so many here, I can't even name them all, but. Um, you're also currently the Senior Scientist of Microbiology at RIM Environmental Labs, um, where you've helped develop a lot of the procedures here that is currently being used by RIM Labs. Yeah. So quite an impressive resume, and, Thank and you. we appreciate uh, you being here with us today. And so I just wanted to, I, we, we've known each other now for almost four years. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, when we, do you remember the first time we came and I... I brought in some worms? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. We started off with... Our, and a lot of our, our local customers, uh, when we first started out, we were using these live probiotic worms. And we were using red worms and, and even black worms. And we started testing. I brought them to you and we said, hey, how can we, I guess, supercharge these? How can we make these better? And so I know we started off with that. And I think it was over that course of time, we, we realized, I mean, and live foods are amazing, but we, we, we quickly wanted to make a product that we could have a longer shelf life. And so then we started out with the liquid. I mean, do you remember we started out yeah, with the liquid yeah. part of it and, uh, and tried making the, the uh, bacterias and things that we were having you guys work on a little bit better, but uh, we finally finalized it. And yeah, this has been going on now for four years, and we finally finalized the, uh, the last portion of it in a powder form. Well, I don't know if we finalized it. We've moved to that we, point. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. We're always going to strive yeah, to get better, yeah. of course. But um, that's, that's where we're at with Benarif right now. And so it's been, a, it's been a great relationship. I've had a lot of fun working with you guys and, Thank and you. being a part mm -hmm. of our team with us. So um, having said that, I guess let's just go right into some of the questions that probably a lot of the, the people would want to know. And I guess the first question is, is, how do corals benefit from the nutrients and microbes found in our product, Benarif? Well, um, you've pointed out before the uh, uh, nutrient levels in, in, in Benarif are beneficial in that you don't have a high protein content and you have a higher carbohydrate content. And that's important because if you have a surplus of uh, proteins, that's going to be, as it's broken down, released as ammonia. And ammonia is extremely toxic to, the, right. to, the, to your coral. The other thing that happens with the bacteria is that they actually serve uh, multiple functions with the coral. Um, number one, they serve as a food to the coral. And they take the waste products that the coral produces, the ammonia and, and things of that sort, and incorporate that into the bacterial cell. So you're producing um, food for the, back, for the coral right. as, the, as the bacteria go. Bacteria also uh, reduce that nutrient level to the point where um, you don't get the algae blooms that you would otherwise. Right. And, and inside the coral, the, um, the bacteria produce compounds, antibiotics, and other things that inhibit pathogenic bacteria. And so overall, right. it, it's a very useful uh, relationship. In one centimeter of coral, there's 10 million bacteria. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Incredible. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and I think, and that's, that's kind of the thing with people when they, when they, when people dose with Benarif and they put in their tank, they're noticing, obviously, like you, you hit on the algae blooms, they're noticing a lot of the, the, the algaes go away, like the cyanobacteria and other things. They're seeing a cleaner water. And I guess you'd attribute it to that part of that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, okay. So this next question is, why is Benarif better at not creating phosphate pollution in saltwater tanks? Well, what, what happens in the uh, phosphate cycle is that as food and nutrients are consumed and excreted, you release orthophosphate into the water. If that orth orthophosphate isn't used, mm -hmm. you'll get an algae bloom. Right. And, and that's what you see on your green in your tanks. Right. 
Um, what bacteria do, they'll, they'll capture that phosphate and they'll store it. And then when the coral eats the, the bacteria, right. you move that phosphate then from the bacteria to the coral. Explain the nitrogen cycle and how it, uh, that relates to the nutrient composition of waste compounds such as ammonia and nitrates. Well, you see, you've got protein being consumed by anything. Uh, when you break that protein down, you, you produce ammonia. And in a normal environment with coral in the ocean, you have an extremely low concentration of ammonia in the water. I mean, it's right. 0. 0.001 part per million, something like right, that. Right, right. But um, in an aquarium, you may get quite a bit more than that. But still, you want to stay below 0. 0.1 part per million. And so what happens with the nitrogen cycle, you have some algae particularly those that may be associated with the coral that can fix nitrogen. And they take atmospheric nitrogen and they convert that to ammonia. That ammonia then is assimilated by the algae and by the coral into protein. Uh, as those proteins then are re digested, the ammonia is released and, and you're going to have toxicity and right. you do something about it. There are bacteria that convert that ammonia to nitrite, right. and then other bacteria that convert that nitrite to nitrate. Those compounds are nowhere near as toxic to coral and fish as what ammonia is, but it's, they're still toxic. Right. And so you, then you have bacteria that will use that nitrate and algae that will use the nitrate to grow for growth material, mm -hmm. and then you consume those algae and those bacteria by the coral. Right. Um, also, what can happen if you set up the conditions in a filter or someplace else, you'll get denitrification. That's under anaerobic conditions mm -hmm. in which you'll convert the nitrate back to nitrogen gas again. And so okay. if you have this in a nice balance, so one part isn't being overdone, then you'll have a nice clean Goldilocks tank. Right, right. Otherwise, you're going, you're, you're going to get to real serious trouble. Right. Well, and I think you kind of hit on something too with the proteins. We've talked about this with Benarif and our formulation. I mean, if you look um, right here, so we're looking at 25.5% uh, uh, protein, um, and we pull that from various sources. So with, with this, um, I think part of that is the fact that we're pulling it from multiple sources of protein. Yes. So we're not our protein level isn't so high, like some of some of the other foods that are on the market, they're in the 50, 60 percentage, or at that 25 percent. So that maybe attributes to some of that, and then of course the bacteria and different exactly, things yeah. that help that. In fact, you see protein by itself <clears throat> has a high surplus of nitrogen, and that's going to be excreted as ammonia. So you're still going to need, I mean, proteins are an essential part of life, and, and mm -hmm. certain parts of the protein, some amino acids, or what are called essential amino acids and have to be supplied. The, the plant or the uh, uh, bacteria or the uh, coral can't make those essential amino acids. And so they have to be supplied as a nutrient. But if you overdo it, then you're going to get the high ammonia concentration and uh, uh, right. upset tank. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's all, it, again, it's like keeping the water clean, you know, keeping it healthy. And mm -hmm. that's, that's what mm -hmm. helps everything proliferate and grow. So at RIM Labs here, what are the goals? What are we, what are we hoping uh, here to achieve when developing cultures for Benarif? Well, you... it, it's, it's a rather interesting question because what you want to do, what we want to do and what we try to do, we looked at the probiotic bacteria as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, which one of those are associated with fish? Which ones are associated with coral? Which ones can we cultivate nicely in the lab? And so we select those bacteria and then we cultivate those under conditions mimicking what you'll see in your aquarium. Mm -hmm. yep. Then we take and select those bacteria again that will survive the drying and, and putting it in your product and storing it and then be effective when you put it back in, in, a, in, the, uh, right. in, a, in the aquarium. So it, it's a, a never ending quest to make sure that we get the right bacteria, we grow them right, Right. And we treat them right as, as, so they're ready for the food. For right. The and I think, and it too, we're at uh, a million CFUs per gram of, mm -hmm. of the beneficial bacteria that we mm -hmm. have in Benarif. So that's awesome. And that helps. And I know people pre-mix it with their tank water. They stir it, let it sit for five minutes, and then they'll, they'll broadcast feed that right across their yeah. tank. And well, one, one of the troubles with any time you're trying to add bacteria to a food, 
A lot, of, a lot of products will start with a high bacterial count, but they don't survive. And by the time right. the customer gets them and puts them in the aquarium, they're gone. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's about the quality and how we process. And like with Benarif too, and I wanted to highlight this, that with our other ingredients that we bring in as well, you know, we, we make sure we, we have a spec sheet that we have to follow so that we're trying to bring in the highest quality of organics. And so those products that, that are certified organic, we have to follow that spec sheet. And of course the proteins, it's the high quality of proteins that we bring in as well as the bacteria. So that's awesome. Okay. The other thing we've done for you uh, is to uh, follow the viability of the bacteria with time as the shelf life and uh, how stable mm -hmm. it is as, as it's sitting on a store shelf. Right. And we just recently did a test where yeah. we had product that had been the shelf life. Um, if I can remember it, I think we submitted that sample. That was mm -hmm. over two years. Yeah. And we just tested it and our pro, our, sure. yeah. our count, microbial count was yeah. still up there yeah. pretty high. So that's awesome. Um, why when using Benarif is it easier to set up a new tank? So that, all, that, that common phrase, the new tank syndrome, Again, it'll give us a little bit of background on that and maybe some information as far as yeah. what will help us. Well, that's a difficult question to answer entirely because every aquarium is different and, and you've got, <clears throat> got an art to really set up a, right. a, a tank, and you know that. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the problems with setting up a tank can actually be the things that you buy in the store to put in the tank, the uh, sea salts, the... Um, uh, substrate, the, the uh, calcium chloride, magnesium, all those can be contaminated with uh, substantial amounts of ammonia, mm -hmm. which are extremely toxic. Um, and, and, and so what you've got to be able to do is not just develop the bacteria that's in the water column, but get a community of bacteria that are on surfaces, mm -hmm. on, the, on your rocks, on your material and system. And what helps, I think, with the Benarif material, and what we've, we've tried to, with, in cooperation with you, is to get a group of bacteria that will make sure you don't have that high concentration, initial shock mm -hmm. of high concentration of, of nutrients in the water that's gonna cause a, a really a bad sequence of events. You need a good sequence of events, it's a, pioneering group of, of, of organisms that start the aquarium. You move successions and until you get a, a balanced aquarium where you're in equilibrium. And uh, um, just adding the best product in the world won't do it if you don't do it right. Right. And so uh, 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 what you've tried to do here and what we've tried to work with you on is to develop a product that can be used skillfully in setting up a, uh, a saltwater or even a freshwater tank. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And we've actually had people too that have dosed uh, this with their freshwater tanks and have seen great results. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, that's awesome. Well, I, you know, I don't know if there's anything. Is there anything else you need to add, Cheryl? Anything you can well, think of? Well, it's been a pleasure to work with you, uh, Jeremy. Uh, it's it's uh, fun to, to look at these uh, aquarium and uh, see the results you get. Right. Uh, um, yeah, that's same here. It's been a pleasure working with you. Do you, you have any questions you want to ask? Oh, man. That. I, I have a whole bunch of questions, but for the time's <laughs> sake, we'll probably have to do it in another video, but okay. I appreciate it. And, uh, and and I'm sure we'll hear from our fans and from our, our customers too that maybe they have some questions and maybe we can do another one of those videos and then we can talk about it some more. So Super. Thank you so much. You Cheryl. bet. Thank you. You bet. You bet. Until next time, guys, thank you. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more of these videos. Thank you so much.